the old man doesn't have long to live. If he learns the truth about his gold mine, it might be the end of him. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of a man called Paladin. Mr. Paladin. Uh, over here, hey boy. Oh, Esau, I didn't see you sit over in corner, slide down in chair, feet up on stool, smoky cigar, uh, like man with nothing on mind. Do I give that impression? Esau. Well, you're quite right. You see before you, hey boy, a man enjoying his leisure. Now, what can I do for you? Oh, uh, here, uh, telegram. Thank you. Ah, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Can you get up here? Well, he doesn't waste words, does he? Signed, Matthew Pen... Matthew Penrod. Oh, you know this man, huh? Well, hey, boy, there was a time when I guess just about everybody knew Matt Penrod, or at least knew about him. Did you ever hear of the Lucky Penny Mine? The Lucky Penny Mine? Yeah. No. Well, anyway, it's up above Prescott in Arizona Territory. Matt Penrod had prospected for years all over the West with no luck. And finally... He was down to his last penny, and the story is he flipped the coin, tails, he'd forget the whole thing, and heads, he'd give it one more try, and the penny came up heads. Oh, so? Uh, that when he found a lucky penny mine, uh, did he make a big strike? <laughs> a big one. A lot of gold was taken out of the lucky penny. Then poor Matt Devane ran out overnight, completely gone. Oh, too bad. Matt wouldn't believe the mine was worked out, and he kept pouring more money into the thing until... Well, he finally went broke. And the last time I saw him, he was still there in that shut-down mine, digging around, looking for that lost vein. Oh, he don't give up, eh? No. It's sort of sad, too. I wonder what Matt wants with me. Can you get up here? Well, I certainly can. Hey, boy, let's go pack. <laughs> When you need someone to do a specific type of job, you hire someone specially trained to do that job. After all, this is an age of specialization. What you may not know is that right now, there are about several hundred thousand men and women who have received special training and are searching for employment. These folks, many of whom are veterans, have physical handicaps, which actually often makes them better able to fill specific jobs. They are all highly skilled, because they have been taught to make best use of the physical and mental abilities they possess. Looking for help? Contact your state employment service and ask about physically handicapped workers. Employing the physically handicapped is good business. The last time I had occasion to visit the Lucky Penny, it was a ghost mine. So when I arrived, I was surprised to see smoke pouring from the smelter stacks and to hear unmistakable sounds of activity. I rode on to the ornate old house Matt Penrod had built for himself on the side of a hill, and he was waiting for me on a wide screen porch that overlooked the mine. Paladin. Hey, Good Matt. Well. Good. I'm glad to see you. How are you, Matt? Look at her, Paladin. Just look out there. Going like a house of fire. Come on over here and sit down, son. Well, Matt, that sure is a beautiful sight, all right. Yeah. So, you fooled the experts. You found the lost vein, huh? <laughs> Darn this thing. Tell me about it, Matt. Well, like you see, with me and this here doggone wheelchair, got so I couldn't climb around my diggings anymore, had to give it up. Yep, I had to call it quits. Oh, not you, Matt. Yep. Then one day this fella come along, said he'd heard about the mine, wanted to know if he could look around. I had him sized up for a real dude, but I said, sure, go ahead. <laughs> well, Paladin, if he didn't go poking around in them shafts and locate that lost vein. Well, you always said it was there, Matt. Yep. Sure wish I was able to get a look at her. And you know something? Know what this fella's name is? Huh. Penny. Joe Penny. <laughs> Joe Penny? <laughs> you see? Yeah. Lucky Penny. Yeah. 
Well, anyway, he come to me with a proposition to work the mine. He take over, we go shares. It's all right with me right now, because I'd just like to see her going. Yeah, I think I understand. Just one bad thing, though. You remember Charlie? Charlie Hodges? Sure. He was the superintendent who was with you for so long. Yep. Well, Charlie and this Joe just couldn't seem to hit it off. Couldn't work together. Wasn't anything I could do about it, Paladin. It just turned out that Charlie had to go. That seems a shame. Sure was. Sort of took the shine off the whole thing. But now there's something else. What's that? Our first shipment went out about three weeks ago, headed for the Mint. But we lost it. Lost it? Yeah. Between the mill and the railroad, they tell me. You mean, you mean it was held up, robbed? So they say. Have you called in the law? No, I don't want the law in on this. That's why I sent for you. It ain't so much I want to know who did it. I just have to know who didn't. And I want you to prove he didn't have nothing to do with it. Who? Charlie Hodges. Oh, Matt, surely you don't think that No, of course he... I don't. But they're trying to tell me he did. Joe Penny, some of them others pointing the finger at him. And I ain't going to have it. You get to work, Paladin. You prove Charlie didn't have nothing to do with it. I don't think that'll be very hard, Matt. Uh, will I have a chance to meet this uh, Penny? Uh, he ain't here now. Said he had to go east on a buying trip. Uh, I don't know. But you get to work. All right, man. <laughs> Look at that mine, Paladin. Going like a house of fire. It was late in the day when I left Matt's house. But I decided to swing around and have a look at the mine. That wasn't easy. A high wall completely surrounded the place. I followed the wall until I found a gate. A sign said, keep out, but I somehow couldn't believe it. The gate was open. So I started through. That's far enough. Can't you read? Yeah. It says, keep out. <laughs> that was your warning, mister. That shot was aimed over your head. If you show up here again, I'll send a bullet through you. I see. You understand? No, but I hope to. Very soon. Come on, boy. A fortress mine was an unusual thing in that part of the country, and I began to wonder just how much old Matt knew about his lucky penny operations. The hotel in town was musty from its years of disuse, but it was open for business... So I checked in and went up to my room. I tried to figure just where to start to prove that Charlie Hodges did not steal the Lucky Penny's gold shipment. Yes? Paladin? Yes? Uh, remember me? Charlie Hodges. Uh, I happened to be in town when you rode through today. I thought I recognized well, I'm you. I'm glad you did, Charlie. Come on, come oh, on in. Thank you. I saw Matt this afternoon. Oh, what'd you think? Oh, he looks old, tired, and... But he's happy. Yeah, yeah, he's happy. Maybe after all, that's what's important. Well, go on, sit down, Charlie. Oh, thank you. Say, Charlie, Matt wants me to check that robbery of his gold shipment. Oh? Uh, Charlie, he wants me to prove that you didn't do it. Well, that'll be easy. I didn't. <laughs> that convinces me. Do you have any idea who did, Charlie? Well, as near as I can figure, nobody. What do you mean? I don't see how anybody could steal the gold. I don't see how there could be any gold. Huh? Oh, the Lucky Penny's worked out. Oh, they're working the mine right now. Look look out the window. You can see the fire from the smokestacks. They must be on a 24-hour schedule. That's what's got me baffled. Paladin, I, I know the Lucky Penny like I know the inside of my hand. And I know a worked-out mine when I see one. That vein didn't just default. It quit. Well, Matt doesn't think so. I know. What about this Joe Penny? Well, we didn't get along right from the start. But funny thing... He saw to it that I never had a chance to check out that vein he discovered. But even helpless as he is, how could anyone fool an old miner like Matt? Well, Matt isn't the man he used to be, Paladin. You know, besides, a man believes what he wants to believe. Ah, uh, you're right. Say, did you ever meet this Joe Penny? No. <laughs> believe me, he's just a cheap crook. Do you know what he's up to? I think so. 
investment swindle? Sure. He wants to make the lucky penny look like a going outfit so the suckers will want a piece of it. And he had to fake the holdup to explain away why there's nothing to show for all the activity. Huh? Exactly. The worst thing, when he collects his boodle, he's going to beat it and leave the old man helpless. Paladin, I don't want to see that happen. Well, we'd have to prove and prove they're faking the operation. The only way to do it is get inside. <laughs> I tried it and I didn't get very far. What can we do, Charlie? Well, you know, Paladin, I've been thinking about this, and there is a way. There's an old tunnel starts outside that wall. It's been sealed off from the main shaft, but uh, it won't take much of a charge to clear it. Well, why don't we give it a try? Go out there first thing in the morning. Sure, I'm willing. I'll have the dynamite with me. How long since this tunnel's been here? Oh, long time. Used to be the East Portal before we abandoned it. <laughs> I'll bet even Matt's forgotten about it. Hey, uh, uh hold it. Uh, now, here's where she's sealed off. Oh, give me that dynamite stick. Uh, here. You got the caps? Uh-huh. When you find your spot, I'll fuse it. All right. Now, let's see. Uh, uh, well, about, about here will make her fall, right? All right. Uh, Won't they hear the blast up there? Oh, no, not enough. You got her crimped yet? Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, now get back a ways. You better get down on your belly. All right. Yeah, that's a short fuse, Charlie. When you light it, move fast. Yeah. <coughs> well, there she is. Very pretty, Charlie. I used to be considered one of the best powder monkeys in the West. I'm glad to know I haven't lost my touch. Yeah. Come on, let's go. I was happy to remember that Charlie knew the lucky penny like the inside of his hand. It was all a bewildering maze to me, but somehow we eventually reached the main portal and we were able to look out on the yard where the mill and refinery were located. Ah, uh, looks like we made a mistake when we figured to disguise ourselves in these miners' clothes. Uh, those men out there look more like Barbary Coast riffraff. I see such a bunch of plug uglies. <laughs> look, all those that ain't in the poker game have rifles over their shoulders. Hey, you smell that? Yeah. What is it? It's chlorine gas. They got that refinery running full blast. Is there any way we can get over there? Yeah, if we can make it past those rifles, we can duck behind the slag dump and get around the back way. Ah, uh, come on. Uh, take off that miner's hat. It makes you conspicuous. Oh. All right, come on. Come on. Yeah. We made it. Yeah. Wonder why they have no rifle guarding this spot. I guess he stepped over to take a hand in the poker game. Say, you know, Paladin, I'm confused. Why? Well, some of that slag we passed is hot, like it was fresh dumped. Well, that would mean they're going through the whole smelting process? Yeah, yeah. Well, they wouldn't have to do that just for, for show, would they? Well, I can't see why. Have you got your gun? Yeah. Uh -huh. We'll have to shoot our way out if we get caught, but I want to try to get to that storage vault over there. Where is that? That iron shed, see? Oh. With a heavy door on it? All right, come on. Yep. Hey, we're in luck. It isn't locked. Oh, Charlie, look at that. Why, gold bars, real gold. Hey, Maxie, look it! Uh oh, they've seen us. Do we shoot? No, 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 better to run. Follow me. Right. If 
you're smoking more these days, but enjoying it less, change to Camels. The Camel blend of costly tobaccos has never been equal for real smoking satisfaction. Have a real cigarette. Have a Camel! Start to really enjoy smoking again. Rifle bullets began to bounce all around us, and suddenly we had a whole army on our tail. I kept my eyes on Charlie's feet and ran around a slag dump, across the yard, and into the mine shaft, and then it was dark. And I followed the sound. We climbed up, slid down, twisted, turned. All right. We can stop now. It's taken a while to find us here. I use a shortcut. You mean you actually know where we are? Yeah, number three shaft. Hmm. There's some storage chambers here, powder magazine, tools, things like that. You suppose we could... Find a lantern? I think so. <laughs> Supply chamber's right down here. Hey, Paladin, that was gold, wasn't it? It sure was. I'll be. That lantern should be here. You really know your way around this lucky penny, don't you? Yeah, I thought I knew all there was to know about her, but she kind of got me baffled now. Hey, here's one. Wait, I'll light it up. Need any help? No, no. There we are. That's cheerful. Say, Paladin. What? Look, this is general storage. Well, what do you know about that? Well, there must be tons and tons of that stuff piled up in here. I'll be. Gold watch case, gold ring, gold loving cup, and gold chain, gold spoon. Hey, look at this. Gold tooth. Oh. Hey, you know, Charlie. All of a sudden, the operation at the Lucky Penny isn't quite so baffling. It is to me. <laughs> I sure have to hand it to Joe Penny. He had quite an idea. Well, if you get this, you tell me, will you? The way I see it, Joe is using the lucky penny to fence stolen gold. This must be sort of a clearinghouse for gold loot from petty thefts and robberies all over the country. Huh. Joe buys it cheap, runs it through the smelter, comes out legitimate. Nice, clean gold bars, acceptable to the mint. What do you know about that? You think that's it, huh? I'm sure of it. Pretty smart. Yeah, maybe not so smart. He got found out. Yeah, we found him out, but right now we're in this mine with a whole army of his riflemen after us. We may never have a chance to prove it. I don't want to prove it. Why not? Well, you know and I know that old Matt hasn't got many days to live. Can you imagine what it'd do to him if this story came out? Well, you're right, Charlie, but we can't let them keep this up. Yeah, let's just spoil their little game. Scare them off. Run them out. Paladin, the powder magazine's right over here. Load up with as much of the stuff as you can carry. We can start here with general storage. A stick of dynamite sealed the entrance to general storage, and then we retraced our steps through the mine, blasting shut every tunnel and chamber where the loot was stored. The noise echoed and re-echoed, and a whole hill began to shake. And when we reached the portal, we saw the riflemen in full retreat across the yard. Charlie tossed his last stick of dynamite after them as to a man they went over the high wall. That evening, I called on Matt Penrod. I merely assured him that I was convinced beyond any doubt that Charlie was innocent. And I, I sure think you, Paladin. Of course, I, I knew Charlie never done it, but I just had to prove it. I sure wish Charlie had considered coming back to the Lucky Penny. Uh, Matt, what about this Joe Penny? Oh, I had a note from Joe... That buying trip he went on, he ran into some sort of difficulty. He's going to be detained a long time. Two to five years, he said. Oh, I see. Well, I think Charlie would be happy to come back. Uh, it'd be worth his while, the way things are popping at the mine. I uh, guess I'm a silly old man, Paladin. But you don't know what it means to me to sit here on my porch like this, hearing them sounds at the Lucky Penny. Like this morning. Yeah, seems kind of quiet tonight, though. But this morning and all that blasting are going on. Yes, sir, e Bob, I could tell things was really a humming. That's right, man. Things were really humming. Oh, oh, Miss Wong. Yeah. 
just finished cleaning your room, oh, Mr. Pilot. That's very nice. Oh, thank you. You had nice breakfast in dining room this Ooh, morning? Oh, yes, I did. Don't what? tell anyone, but I had big steak. Big steak. With three eggs. Three eggs? Hash brown potatoes. Hash brown potatoes. And hot biscuits. Oh. Dripping butter. Oh, Ma, mm. you eat too much. You get pudgy fat. <laughs> no danger, Miss Wong. The only good meals I get are those here at the Carlton, and that isn't very often since I'm away most of the time. Yes, anyway. sir. Uh, Oh, uh, Mr. Pilot and Macy Wong found penny you leave on bureau dresser. Oh, yes, that's a special penny, Miss Wong. Oh? Came in the mail yesterday with some very sad news. A friend of mine passed away. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, yeah. wonderful old gentleman. Oh. He remembered me in his will. Oh, you inherited some money? Yes, that penny. Just one penny? That's all. Huh. But it's very special. A lucky penny. Oh, it's supposed to bring you much luck? Maybe. We'll see, Miss Wong. <laughs> yes, sir. Have gun. Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Joseph Cranston, and Joseph Kearns. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. Yeah, Tempo Watch Repairs. This is the place. May I help you, sir? Yes, can you do anything about, uh, about this here? What, uh, what is it? Well, it's a wind-up radio. The crank's there on the side, but the spring's broken or something. Try winding it up. All right. Never seen one of these before. A wind-up radio, huh? Let's take it to a radio repairman. I did, but he said to bring it to you. What do you do with it, anyway? Well, I carry it around with me. like to listen to Arthur Godfrey, Gary Moore, Art Linkletter, Bing Crosby, and Rosemary Clooney. They're all on CBS radio each weekday. I know. I'm partial to them myself. But I'm afraid I can't help you with the radio. Why don't you get yourself one of those uh, little transistor jobs? Yeah, I guess I'll have to. Well, thanks anyway. Oh, do you have the time? Yes. 